Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video I want to tell you guys how to get Revision Zero. It's not the most difficult thing to do, but I'm going to basically walk you through the exotic mission, which is where you get the pattern for this, and then you get the weapon. You get one, and you get the pattern, you can craft it. The idea is the weapon is going to be the reward of the mission we just get this week. Now, the way to get Operation Seraph Shield, you have to do the weekly story. So you gotta go through, you know, make sure you have enough Seraph key codes so you can go in, do a heist battleground from the playlist, open the Seraph chest, uh, you know, go do the story, talk to the exo frame, progress the story. Then it's gonna tell you to do your operation. This week's operation is the exotic quest. Now, you've got two different ways to do it. You've got normal and you've got legend. Legend is basically at contest mode of 1580. So anything above 1580, it's kind of useless. Um, normal, you actually can out level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through it on normal, explain the mechanics, explain how this works. There are multiple things that we are going to unlock later on. If you look at the exo frame, you're going to be able to unlock multiple nodes in future weeks. So yes, there is some time getting involved in this exotic quest but we're gonna be able to bypass traps and laser barriers to get certain things in the mission. We're gonna be able to access certain doors and terminals that we can't normally. And they're also gonna be able to get a buff later on, but these are the two important ones that let us access more of the mission. So this video is gonna be like week one of three or four, depending on how many variations of this thing that we've got. Now, there are some secrets I've found, which um, I'll kind of explain as I go, but the idea is, Go do the weekly story, heist battlegrounds as usual, open the Seraph chest, and then we're gonna jump in here. Now, my loadout in here, I would recommend Arc Resistance. I'm currently running hard of, I'm just running, screw it, I'm gonna switch over, basically just because that there's not much of a point not to, just to show you guys the best way to do this. I'm gonna switch over to Arc, and then we're gonna go back to where we were. Gonna go with Arc Resistance, because basically everything in here is Arc, so you may as well be. And then Sniper Resistance, just so it doesn't catch you off guard. Uh, but other than that, I'm running, you know, 100 resilience on my Titan. I've got a couple weapons here just to show you guys how it works. This is not like an optimal loadout. If you got like a Wither Horde for, you know, DPS, weak and clear. If you're running solo, do solo operative. Your basic stuff. Um, I don't even need champion things right now, so I could definitely have a better situation of reloading and all that other stuff going on. So I'm going to optimize here for just a second. And other than that, I don't think I got too much. Okay. So bring something for ad clearing. You're gonna have groups of ads, so bring something for ad clearing. If you got a Volt Shot sidearm from last season, like a Brigand's Law, freaking amazing weapon. I just managed to actually get the random roll for the Aculos SMG. At some point I will craft this, I don't have it yet. You are gonna also want something for range when we get to a certain section. Basically it's outdoors, very far distance shots, and there are snipers involved. Bring a scout rifle, it's probably the best option. Even my pulse that I love, not quite as effective. Bring a scout. If you got Tarnished Metal from last season, even better. Something for DPS that you want to use. Sometimes you're going to be able to crit enemies. Sometimes you're not. So bring some options. I've got my Tarnation Grenade Launcher. This is going to be for things like Briggs. This is going to be for, you know, bigger shielded enemies. Also, I'm going to bring my Taipan just for the boss in the end. If you've got Wither Horde, it's great for the final boss room. Uh, if not, again, so like Osteostriga, if you have that from Witch Queen, the ability to clear ads with this thing is actually going to be fantastic. So I've debated on using this, but I've already got an SMG, so I may as well hit something different. Um, and if you're going to go, say, Osteostriga, Salvager Salvo is fantastic. It's arc. You've got chain reaction. You can do great things with that as well. And then DPS, really just a choice for you. Just pick whatever you want. But there's a lot of arc shields in here, so something arc is not a horrible idea. That's pretty much the general rundown on the loadout. And remember to unlock this thing, it's just do the highest battleground. So let's jump into normal. I'll explain everything as I go, and I will get you guys your um, brand new weapon, the Revision Zero, which has some cool traits to it, but that'll probably be discussed later on once we learn more about the weapon and the extra catalyst and all that stuff. So more about the weapon in a future video. Right now, let's run through the mission. All right, so when you land, we've been here before, but we're actually just gonna go right up the middle. You can actually see there's an ogre at the front of the gate. We'll get to that later. But again, when you run through here, one of the triumphs that you're gonna get is doing this opening section without dying. So just trying to get comfortable running through here is gonna be kind of an important thing. I don't know if I could have been that accurate if I tried. As you run up here, you're gonna get some uh, little guys that run at you, use this rock for cover. This side will come at you first. This is why I said add clear. 
because there really is just a decent amount of that that you've got to do. Next one, we've got our knight. Pop him. Basically, the ads kind of tell you where you're going to want to go. Same thing, pushing forward. Hide under here. And usually what I'll do is I'll just literally jump over, throw a grenade on his head. I'm just going to run by so I can get inside out of line of sight and then just make sure he dies. Be right back, checking on dogs. All right, so when you come inside, uh, we're just gonna do a little traversal inside this area. And this is gonna be quite a long journey, so get cozy. Oh, the biggest thing is you're just gonna need to figure out what you can do this week, what we're gonna unlock in future weeks, and the main goal is to show you how the mechanics of this whole place work. So, prime example, that is literally one of those. If you're going for your solo flawless run, which there is a triumph for that, um, this section, the laser beams are not there. <laughs> If you are running fast enough that you're almost running faster than the load zone, especially if you have arc on. Now, these, normally, if you're running from the rock room and then you come in this doorway, are sitting right in front of you. So you need to go over. Kind of cancels the solo flawless pretty quickly. And then under. Nothing back there. I swear there should be something back there, but there's not right now. Slide under this one. Make sure you go far enough underneath. I don't love these doorway ones, so when you get close, try and hop over so you, the door frame at the top doesn't catch you. Same thing here. Wait as late as you can and then jump it. Now, in here, we're going to get our first set of ads when they spawn in. And that, if you've done Deep Stone Crypt, you'll actually recognize the mechanics. If you've never done Deep Stone Crypt, some of this is going to be brand new to you. This is going to be our scanner buff. What it's going to do is basically allow you to reveal what objects you can interact with and without the scanner buff you won't be able to interact with them so you're going to interact with that terminal come back here and interact with this terminal and that one that is going to bring down your lifts and we are headed to space in case you didn't know it this mission's not overly difficult if you want to experience it before watching the guide now is the time to tune out and try it by yourself so you can see some of the stuff for yourself live. But come back here and I'll show you how it works. So, here we go. Huh, perfect. Did not know these guys were actually here, so this is perfect for the guide. Okay, so again, what you need to do to move forward is usually take your buff, your scanner buff that you've got, and what you need to do is basically deposit it in the terminal and it will usually open a door. But now is actually a good stopping point. You see these little robots flying around with the laser beams? So far I have seen them in three locations, and I'm guessing these are the three. I actually did not know they could be here until right now. Now you'll notice with the scanner buff, I can see which one to shoot first. If I shoot the wrong one, it will typically just respawn right away. Now, there is one point in this, like, that I've seen that if you are going by yourself, it is hard to tell which one to shoot because you can't really bring the scanner buff with you. But I did bring it with me with a group, so I know what the order is. Granted, all you have to do is shoot them in the proper order. So if you shoot one, then you need to figure out which one's showing up next. Now, sometimes they do move around, but it'll be this one up here. And it looks like I've got this one up here. Closer to the door and the one on the far wall. And you're gonna see Warsack Command Security Door opened. Now, what that's gonna do is at the very end of the mission, you're gonna be able to open an extra chest. It looks like you get to do it probably once a week, I would guess, because I've run this multiple times, I've only opened it once. So you don't need to do that every time, but I'm gonna point out the three places where those little flying guys are at. This is one of them. And if you have the scanner buff with you, you can have the scanner buff with you for two of the sections. The last one, I'll just explain where they're at. But again, once you get in this room, go ahead and drop your scanner buff. That actually worked out really well. I did not know they could be there. Onward we go. 
And now we're gonna have our first set of ads. Gonna have a captain over there. These guys are not too bad. I got my scanner buff. Looks like most are dead. Gonna have some ads in there. Make sure everything's fairly clear. Grab your scanner buff. And our first one that we're gonna scan is right back here. Like from the door, just do a quick U-turn. Second one is actually gonna be in that room over there. So we've gotta go through a little uh, vent over here. She could go faster in here. If you double, if you hit the jump button a lot, you can kind of traverse through these things faster. Not much though. I wasn't too much about it. They're on that other side, so we're gonna go ahead and interact with our terminal. And this is an example of the laser. Something in here is gonna be available later on when we get access to getting through lasers. Lasers not hurting as much. This is one of those future rooms that we're gonna find. I'll try to point them out, but this is the idea. You can't get through the lasers the way they're placed. In the future, we'll be able to once we get the proper unlock. So back where we were for the third scanner, and also we got some ads waiting for us in there. Doesn't really help that much. Sometimes it does, but... Now again, I've got Volt Shot for ad clearing, so things die pretty quick with that, so it's nice and helpful. These things are so annoying. They're in a lot of places, though, so if you're worried about getting caught off guard, just know that there are those little traps everywhere. Now we're going to hack. And we're going to be right in this room. Now this is the second room where those little flying drones could be with the laser beams. You know, like one was up here, one was floating around down here. I think one might have been over there, and one might have been in this region. But again, if you have the scanner buff like you do right now, take a second, see if your little drones are in this room. If they are, make sure you shoot them in the proper order. And again, if you shoot them in the wrong order, no big deal. But, you know, shoot each of them down. And then when you're done with that, you should see the uh, prompt that says you unlock the security door or the Warsat thing. When you're done with that, then you can deposit your treasure. And again, that little field is gonna strip you of your scanner buff anyway, so you can't really come back to it either. Right now, we're gonna get our scanner buff up. Kill all the enemies in here. There's our scanner guy. Looks like he's down. Couple, couple shanks. All right, so we're gonna grab our scan. First one is right back here. You do that one, you're gonna have a few more that spawn. A couple tracers, a couple normals. And we're actually gonna go up where the tracers are, through the vent, and in this top section here. And in here, you've got three laser grids, so just be patient. They basically kind of fade away, and they go back and forth you know, they basically start at the front and then go to the back of the room. Now, if you're fast enough with your scan, you can grab this one and turn around and usually get to this middle section. And then they're going to start to fade out. I'm whiffing my grenades. I'm whiffing everything right now. The lasers won't come back when everything's down, so you should be good. You might have a couple more adds just to be safe. But at this point, do not deposit your buff. What you need to do is you need to be able to see which one of these you need to access. So if I'm looking at the four, mine is the far right. Now, when I deposit, I've got to remember that. Because my scanner is now gone, so I can't see which terminal it is. You're gonna come in here, it would, and then you're gonna jump up, and you've got four terminals, so you need to remember which one it was. So for me, it was far right, come over here, and hack it, and you're good. If not, these lasers are going to kill you if you pick the wrong one, so. Check, make sure you write it down if you need to, and you should be good. If you need any ammo, use the ammo crates, that's what they're for. And we're gonna move on. Now, we're gonna have a lot of ads in here, and we're also gonna have our first little fallen turrets in here. These things hurt. Now, for my grenade launcher, it takes two of them. On Legend, it took three. But don't mess with these turrets, especially if you're going for a solo flawless run, they hurt. Nice that it's two Arbalists as opposed to four on Legend. And again, even a little machine gun, not too bad. There we go. In here, we've got one more up top. And 
and you should be good to proceed. Now this is the big room. This is the one that's probably gonna trip most people up at first. Now the ads are not nearly as bad here, just because I'm not on legend difficulty. Legend, you feel it. The guys are definitely gonna be a little more something to fear. Right now, at this difficulty, not too bad. Bolt shot spread is just always amazing though. Hard to argue with it. That's most of them, probably a few shanks back here. Then we got a turret down below. I don't know if you can see it, but it's down there. So while you're up here, go over the clear. Now, I gotta grab the scanner buff. Now, if you guys can hear my dogs, but they're just gonna be part of the audio track at this point. Again, from far away, they're not as accurate, but up close, those things really will melt you. So you've got a lower floor which has like a floor pathing. And then you've got the upper floor, which are gonna show your terminals. So from here, I've got the left set. So I've got center, center or middle, 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 and middle. Literally the easiest it could be. Every time you come through here, this will be random. I've seen it all over the place, but I've got middle, 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 which is easy for me to remember. But I've had like left, left, right, or left, right, middle, or whatever it may be. Mine's all middle, so that probably works pretty well. Second part, you need to figure out the floor. Now, if you need to draw out a grid so you know where to go, do it. Especially if you're going for a solo flawless, don't screw it up. But basically, you're going to walk over here. One, two, three, four. Up two, over two, up two. You can get to the last terminal if you need to. And then over two. Back, that whole section back there is open. Come up two, and then over here. And you basically need to walk this pathing as the only safe zone. I, if you hover over this part, even in the air, you're going to get microwaved. And I say literally microwaved because if you die, you'll see, you will get microwaved. Um, so basically, you just need to know what the pathing is in the room. I don't know if that changes on a week to week basis. It very well may. So week two, it could be slightly different. All right, here we go. So we're going in here. This one, you're going to want to crouch underneath. And then come up here and get closer. So here I've got middle. Again, remember, you can walk to that one, but then you need to get back to this section here. Hop over this one. I need the middle terminal here. Come on back. And then middle terminal here. This is mine though. Every time it's gonna be different. You could have left, right, left. I've seen pretty much every variety. I think I've run this thing like three or four times already. So just write down which ones it is from the top. If you need to write a grid, that's fine. But again, that's the path you need to take. Once everything's activated, you're good to proceed forward. Again, once you're in here, you're gonna have your guy with the new buff. And again, remember, these are those star doors which we'll get access to in future, future weeks, basically. So this is the second type of act, um, ability that you get, and this is the operator. Basically, it's gonna show you which Activate and it's going to show you which panels you can shoot but this one glowing with this little grid on it that you can see Anywhere you look at it, it's pretty pretty obvious. It's the one you just need to basically shoot it once So again, these are doors we'll get access to in future weeks. So once we're in here you can Peek in watch to your left hand side. You're gonna have some enemies over there so Just know that they're gonna be around All right. You're looking for second terminal. It's right in here. It's gonna open the door into that room. So you're just gonna go ahead and hang back a little bit. Here's where a ranged weapon is a good idea to have. We will be with you in just a minute, guys. Couple adds to clear out before you get uh, overwhelmed there. All right, and then we're gonna go down through this tunnel. Now in here, you can see this right here. That's your next one. Now, if you got a grenade that you can chunk in there, theoretically you could do it, but we'll get to them in a second. I've actually thrown a grenade through that window. It's kind of a thread the needle situation, but it worked. 
All right, so then we're gonna pull back. You will have more ads that spawn, so be careful. Like, as soon as you hit the switches, things are gonna be respawning. Just be aware that you probably are not done with all the guys that you'll be facing. Now, behind this pillar, we're gonna be facing the fourth room. Now again, I'm running Volt Shot, which is making my life a little easier. But if you don't have it, just be a little more cautious with some of your ad clearing. And then you kind of come up to the window here, and there's your fourth one. You see, you gotta do it back and forth from the different angles. Come outside. Have an ad here. Probably a couple more. A little Volt Shot. Volt Shot for clearing ads, man. I cannot. I cannot tell you how good it is until you start using it and get a feel for how functionally it's like just one of the coolest things. Alright, so when we get up here, next big room, you do have a turret on the roof. I know not an obvious place for one, but if you catch it early, it's not a biggie. I'm gonna throw a grenade on the back, clear out some of my ads. Totally forgot this guy's here. And I think there's actually one more turret over here, tucked in the corner. Be careful, you got three, so don't push up as far. Now that little thing on the ground, the elite in this room should drop this thing right here. The Warsat Control Nexus card. If that doesn't drop, it bugged out on us one time when I was running it earlier with somebody. It straight up did not drop, so if it doesn't drop, it's kind of bugged. And you basically have to restart the mission. So I don't know if it's that common of a thing or if it was just unlucky for me. But that's one of those things you just need to make sure you pick up, otherwise you're not going anywhere. It's another one of those little future access doors. So now we're going to take the operator buff and deposit it to open the door. And this is going to be kind of your boss fight. So now is a good time to hit the rally flag, but save the heavy bucket for later on in the fight. And the way you kick this fight off, shoot all the barrels. Now you're going to have a big knight that spawns in the middle. When he spawns in, let his shield go away before you start dumping the, the big ammo on him. Just kind of wait a second, his shield will drop as he calls in adds. Now, you can go for just kind of getting the damage on him that you need to basically send him away. Once he's gone, then you're going to have some brigs show up. The brigs are going to make things more interesting, but you can kill him one side at a time. You're gonna have a lot of melee guys here, so be aware. This is where having melee damage resistance is not a bad thing, but the snipers are still probably worse, I would say. So that's why I'm leaving the arc resistance and the sniper resistance on, because those snipes up top are the ones you don't expect. And while they may not hit that hard, especially if you're on legend difficulty, you'll notice some more there. Now, if you got heavy on dropping like I do right now, then by all means, drop some heavy on the big guys, and they'll go down pretty quick. Way to juke my grenade. Nice job. See, I can hear a sniper off to my left. I just can't see him. But he's probably sitting... Again, they're in a few different spots, whether they're up in the air, down below. You're going to have melee guys constantly spawning. Like, the melee marauders are going to be coming frequently. Definitely depending on where you're at in the room, which adds are spawning. Legend, there's a ton of adds, so be aware. Legend is going to be spicy. Now, if you prefer, come back here to the front of the room. There we go. I told you more adds are going to spawn pretty frequently, too. Bolt shot is just too good. I don't want it to be nerfed, but it's just so good. Yeah, so Feeding Frenzy, Volt Shot, Eichelos SMG, that's, that's the role you want. Just trying to juke again. Go ahead and delete you. This is why I said burst damage supers are just going to be good. Just for the reason you can really delete, guys. Chain reaction on a grenade launcher, also very good. Where are you going, bud? I just gotta clear out the rest of the ads. I 
Not too many left. There we go. That should be that. If you got any ammo, you might still have some enemies in this door, so just be aware. Don't just go sprinting in aimlessly. Now we can go. And basically what it's going to say is you need to get get captured. Sounds weird, but that's what you got to do. Oh. Run on down, and then you're going to be basically facing a wall of enemies through glass. You pretty much give up your weapons. Now, I have no dialogue on this section right now. There should be enemies. There they are. As I said, the like the lag in here is a little funky sometimes, so take things a little slow. But basically, there's dialogue saying you need to surrender your weapons or you need to get captured, and what that's going to do is allow... I think it's LC or Anna or one of them to basically... When the servitor transmats you, you get a transmat code, and then all of a sudden we're like good to go. So you should hear the dialogue. I just don't have any in repeat playthroughs for some reason. So don't worry if you don't. There is some cool dialogue, but I've got it recorded. I'm just not playing it right now. Doesn't take too long. Dialogue's pretty quick. Give it about five seconds. Should show up, and then you're free to go. You got a big guy here waiting on you, so may as well just mess his day up. Now, you're also going to have some ads here, but the one thing you can do is come right here and gain ship access. If you do that, you're going to get a whole bunch of little robot minions that help you out. It's all the little bots we've had in like that one lost sector. Same principle is going to be here. Now, if you do this on Legend, there are a lot more captains, a lot more ads coming at you. They are much harder to kill. So you're not going to be quite as uh, quite as pushy as we are right now. Take it a little slower on Legend. The room is tilted. You are not crazy. Right, so we got some... Uh, Couple turrets there. Go fast on those. Same thing here. The turtle do a little work. There we go. Not really any secrets around here. We're just in for a big fun part. Now, if you want to appreciate the view, we are at the uh, like Earth Space Station. That's the Traveler hanging out over. Literally, you can see the wall, like interior wall and exterior wall of the last city. So if your resolution's high enough. You can see some pretty fantastic looks right there. So I love this skybox. It's so cool. All right, so we are going down here where the red lights are, to here, to here, and then we're going across all the edge. So for now, even on a Titan, they're pretty nice on the drop. Catch it early, and it's not too bad. I feel like no matter what I do in Vow of the Disciple, that first fall always wants to nearly kill me. In here, it hasn't been nearly as dramatic. Now, the one thing you do want to note is those little rotating platforms. Be aware, because they will definitely get in your line of jumping. So just kind of make sure you time it between those. And once you get to this last one, you're not trying to make it all the way out there. Jump down here. Give yourself a much safer run. Make sure you're not trying to jump through a slow field. That will actually get you killed. Now, here is a point to stop before you get too far. Make sure you got two things. One, make sure you got sniper damage resist on, especially if you're going for a solo flawless. Two, switch over to your ranged weapon. Probably a scout rifle is going to be one of the best. And just make, and this will make this whole section much easier. So you're going to have a few ads here. And you can get closer on this one. But you are going to have some shanks come out. So when you see the ships, look for the shanks. Because that's just going to make your life easier if they're all dead. Now I've got a Volt Shot Scout, which is great. That's why Tarnished Metal from last season is pretty solid. Now there again are more weapons and more enemies on Legend, so be careful about that. But if you have any of those slow fields, do not try and jump through a slow field. That is actually a hole. That's probably a joke by somebody. So make sure you don't miss that one. So again, look out here. Look for your shanks. Tracer shanks will be around. See if you got them all. Got an operator over there. There's one tracer shank. We got a knight. And then when you come up here, you're going to see your operator. This is going to give you the operator buff again when you kill this guy. I killed him faster because, again, I had Volt Shot on. So, Volt Shot. No! Ho, 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 ho. Remember when I told you? Watch those things. 
No joke, like, nearly done. Now, this is, like, probably for that exact reason, but that's not your normal pathing, but I will take it. I almost cast my super as a titan. I have the option to possibly fly to safety with Thunder Crash, but that's one of those rare moments where it actually didn't go so bad. But again, also, if you're slowed up like this, then definitely don't jump anywhere, because it's going to kind of ruin your fun. Normally, you're supposed to be jumping across those things, but... Fun moment when you're making a guide, just right here to here is all you're supposed to do. Not get smashed in the head and fall down. Alright, so you're going to want to jump out here. Check if you got any ads. They should not be up yet. Now, I will tell you, when you shoot these switches, there are exploder shanks that kind of wander over your direction once you start doing this process. What's going to happen when you shoot the three switches? So it's here, here, and then over there. Now you can kill these guys first to give yourself a little nicer jump up there. Again, scout rifles here are great. All right, so you're gonna have a platform to jump on like, I wanna say it's like here, here, or maybe like down here, down here and over there. But the idea is when you shoot these switches, you wanna make sure you're kind of ready to go because as I said, the exploder shanks show up and you don't wanna linger long. So if you can do this quickly, it's gonna be better off. This one's a little harder to see up here. Okay, literally had a couple almost falls in this one. It's not a flawless run, but as you can tell. Now you are gonna be surrounded by shanks pretty quickly up here, so be ready for them. That's why sniper resistance is important. You got some peeking over the edges over here. That's why you want the scout rifle. Literally this section alone. Once you're done with those guys, you should be safe to... Uh... Now again, I always hate speed boost jumping, so I'm always a little anxious when I do that. Now, in here, I'm just going to tell you to run over in this corner. Now, you can probably keep your scout rifle on here, honestly. Just because it's going to be a little easier. But again, just use this corner, whatever you got for a ranged weapon. Just hang out. And then when you walk past that threshold, you'll be good. That's another laser door in there. And this is actually the second room where you would um, find those little floating bots. I'll try and point out where they are. Or this is the final room, sorry. You had the first one like right when we bumped into them. Second one was that that little uh, servitor area. And then the third one is right here. Now this one's hard to get to by yourself with the scanner buff. So basically the order is gonna be, the, one of them's like right here one of them's kind of up under these little rafters. One's floating way out there. And then the other one, the fourth one, would be here. It's not too hard with process of elim elimination, but it's like one, two on the ceiling, three somewhere floating back out there, four right here on the front. All right, I'm going to go back to my Ikelos. Grab any ammo if you need it. If you're good, you don't need it. Take your buff. Open the door. And this is actually going to be a boss fight, so make sure you're kind of loaded up with whatever you need. So this is where your hive boss is going to show back up. You're pretty much good to kill him pretty quickly. The faster you kill him, the faster this is done and all the enemies despawn. That's why my advice right there, like if a while back, like when you're doing the spacewalk, switch to a like a big burst damage super. And that's going to serve you much better than trying to do that, you know, a slow way. Now, uh, another one of the nodes is going to be right back there. If you're looking for one of the nodes for the Warmind nodes, those will be back there. The little yellow balls that are out in the world. This is your um, basically tally of how many you get. There's a total of 50. Some of them are in here. But yeah, those are 50 that you can go around and shoot in the world. Access is currently denied. Looks like you need all 50 to get something in here. We can't get to all of them this week, so again, this will be covered later. So once you come in here, we're gonna try and get our art, our activator buff here. Gotta love the voltness. All right, now when you get the the buff and you shoot the two switches, you got one over there and one over here. This one opens this door. 
This one opens this door. When you open the doors, you've got some exploder shanks coming. So my advice, shoot both switches. That way you don't have to actually switch later on. So there's one, there's two. And then go look here. Here they come. Get ready and just take them out quick. The main reason for that is they will come mosey in this room behind you and there's not a lot of room to run. So then in here, you just need to clear both sides. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Those turrets, while I'm on like arc resistance and I'm on normal difficulty on legend, they are rough. And especially that guy that close will just mess you up. Another turret in here. Again, if you just line up sight the gun, I'm also gonna be shooting the door. And now we can just shoot it sight. If a couple shots hit you, it's not too bad. Again, I could crouch down. We can shoot him in the toe and probably be okay. All right, so now we need to deposit one buff. Then we need to get our scanner buff. So we can scan this side. I don't know if there's any more ads right now. Yeah, it's like I thought there was. And then come over here and scan this one. And that's why you do the two operator ones first and just open both sides. That way you don't have to trade the buff back and forth. Makes your life a little easier. And then that door should open. Grab any ammo if you need it. Watch for the snipes. Again, that's why the sniper resistance actually is a really good idea in here. You are gonna have a turret somewhere. Oh, he's on the floor. Or he's on the ceiling, I mean, not floor. So try and find a good angle for him. And then find my captain. And when you do this on legend, you got double cap. Well, I guess there's both here. There's just so many ads when you're on the higher difficulty. So I'm on scanner right now. So we're eventually gonna need to get to that. I just can't get to it at the moment. So what you gotta do, deposit your buff here. That will open, or that will allow you to pick this up. And if you hit this switch, it will allow you to open that door. I'm just gonna go a little volt shot, get my turret death. Coming around the corner. And then be careful, you got some ads behind you as well if anything gets by. I'm on operator right now. I need to get scanner so I can activate that one. So again, you gotta go dunk it back. Grab our scanner buff. And this will activate your teleporter. Not much else in this room, especially for this week. Watch out for these guys. And you should be good into the teleporter. Now, I will say for anybody who has, like, photosensitivity issues, there are some moments, and I think this is where I started seeing them, where pho photosensitivity, like, kind of weird flickering or texture issues seem to be kind of a weird issue in here. So just be careful about that. If that's a thing that you got to deal with, um, for one, I apologize. And two, this area, I did notice where I feel like that could affect some people. So just be cautious about that. hear those weird pings I feel like it's something but then it's just probably an audio thing in my head all right so protocol accepted so now we're gonna get the suppressor and there's a shield buffer in there which is shielding him what you need to do is kill the guy with the suppressor buff pick that up and then in the field that these little things are at you need to stand in the field and shoot it and each you have to do it in each one so here's one so if you're standing in it he'll glow and this is basically a preview for how the boss is going to work. Once you do that, it's basically going to activate a door. So you get access to a little shield thing here. When that's done, come in, come back, and then you will be able to actually kill the enemy. Go ahead and deposit your suppressor buff. So again, these are the texture flares. Sorry in advance, but these are the ones I was talking about. It's this door specifically. I noticed it a lot on. It was like I'm trying to get you like just to see it. But yeah, B, that's the stuff I was talking about. So just be careful with that. So we're at the bus. Um, basically, what's going to happen is um, the major buff that you're going to be working with in the boss room is the suppressor buff. So you're going to have an enemy with the suppressor buff once you get to his shield face. You're going to have to pick that up, stand in each of the three fields where the shields are at to be able to kind of activate the side rooms when the side rooms open. One is underneath him, one is on each side. Kill the three shield generators, do damage to them, rinse and repeat. It's not really too difficult. 
Again, use the rally flag as opposed to the heavy bucket. Save that for later if you need it. Now is a time, if you do want to switch, now would be a time to switch to something like Wither Horde and Linear. I probably just killed my ammo department, but we'll just roll with it. It's fine. Now he's got freezing grenades. So I'm going to use Wither Horde and then I'm going to go Linears on him. So I can do a lot of damage just with that setup. This is also normal difficulty. You'll notice Legend has a much different feel. Okay, if you're looking to clear ads and it's getting a little hectic, that's your suppressor, guys. If you're looking to find him, grab your buff. Keep clearing your ads. Just make sure you're covered. These little guys get to be annoying, but they're not too terrible. Just watch for your ad clear. This is why Volt Shot for, like, clearing groups is great. Remember, those guys shoot him in the little canister lantern thing. So stand in the buff and shoot him, and that'll count for one. And you're gonna go find the other two. One's down here in the middle. And one's up top as well. And I'm gonna throw a grenade. So up here. All right, so I've hit all three. Now I gotta go clear the rooms out. So that's a slightly different process. One's right here. Nice place to shoot it while you're up above. Got his little frozen thing. One is right down in the middle, so it's not the best position, but it's not really the work. That's not great. And come on, there we go, that's two. One more over here in the corner. Come on. I don't have much linear ammo, so I might lean a little heavy on the uh, Wither Horde at the moment. I do have a bucket back there. I could probably go grab it just to make life easier. So let me do that real fast. Grab some ammo. And again, weakened clear. A good thing to let Wither Horde do its work. Also slows him down. Oh, oh he is like the tracking ones. I wondered how he was hitting me sometimes. That was enough damage to him. So rinse and repeat one more time. There's a timer to do this in 30 minutes when you're not going through and going for like explanations and stuff like that. It's really not gonna be too bad, I don't think. find my little suppressor dude hanging out here in the middle and he's running on the rafters up here nope he died all right same thing and the nodes are in the same spots you don't have to go searching too far and all you get i mean i did 27 damage with an smg halfway across the map it's not like you have to do a ton of damage from the actual spots you just have to do some damage from the spot literally just enough to tag him that's why if you're going for speed later on Three. Now I just gotta go get the shields so I don't get frozen to death first here. One back here. So there's one in the middle. You can probably almost hit it underneath. I gotta get the one on the far side over here. Shields are down. Now I'm pulling a little Wither Horde for Weaken. A little Super. I'm to the top. He's probably almost going to die from Wither Horde, but we'll kill him. And we're done. Enemies will dissipate when you actually drop his health completely. And run all the way to the back. So again, laser beams for secrets. We got a door over here for secrets that we're gonna have. If you find the little bots in the middle of the mission, these guys right here, this is what they look like. It's gonna be right in this room right here. You'll have a chest, but again, only once a week, it seems like. Go ahead and upload our virus. Emergency exit is activated. And if you do it on legend, you'll get a bonus chest over here one time as well. 
Go ahead and grab your weapon, resonance sims, whatever you got. And the first time you beat it, you should get a pattern for uh, your weapon, revision zero. So then we're going to go to the Enclave and we'll finish this thing up. All right, so the final part of the quest is actually going to be one, shape the, w the weapon, and then two, commune with the relic. So when you get to the Enclave, you're going to come right here to the relic. It's under pulse rifles. You're going to go ahead and go through the process of shaping the weapon. I did it already. I'm not going to go do it again. Then once you've actually shaped it and it's in your inventory, should be right here, crafted, good to go. Peek over here and go ahead and interact with the relic conduit. And you've got a nice little piece of text right here. And that is it. So that's the guide for how to get revision zero and basically week one for Operation Seraph Shield. Now I'm gonna do a legend solo flawless guide in a separate video, so stay tuned for that one. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like below, leave a comment if you've got thoughts, maybe anything I missed. Uh, it seems like Bungie is aware of the texture flares, those little kind of photosensitivity issues. That is something they will definitely put as a high priority, I'm sure. So they will be trying to fix that one. So stay tuned. I'm sure it'll be a hot fix or something for those. And other than that, um, I've got a lot more stuff coming to you guys. So if you want to hang out on Twitter or Twitch, I'm on there as Ebontis. If you're new to the channel, I've got lots of content coming still this season. And of course, Lightfall is going to be huge. So hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell so you don't miss any content from me. And I hope to see you in the next video. You guys have been amazing and good luck. And stay tuned for my solo flawless guide on this as well as probably more content on the dungeon as well. Have a great one, everybody. See you soon.